Hello our most valued student, my name is Confident, welcome to our revision session, this is Engineering Science N2 and today I'm looking at the topic on mechanical drives as well as lifting machines. Now this is one topic that carries a lot of marks in your Engineering Science N2, I'll say it's the first topic that carries actually more marks than all the other topics if you can look at your paper and if you are in a way preparing for your final exams this is the good time or good chance for you to revise through these sections that i'm going to be dealing with so that you can prepare yourself well for your exams so i'm not going to do only one lesson i'm going to do between three and four lessons so i will encourage you to look out for the other coming lessons and the best thing to do is for you to subscribe to our channel so that you can be notified every time there is a new video another thing to do is to ensure that the notification bell is turned on so that every time we post the video immediately youtube notifies you that there is a new video from the 24 minute lessons again guys i i know there is quite a lot of guys who always ask for who put on uh, different views different ideas different suggestions on how maybe the question could have been approached i greatly appreciate that please keep bringing in some questions some ideas because these um that's how this channel is growing it is growing because of what you guys are doing behind the background by sending me your questions by sending me your ideas by commenting you are doing a lot because it also gives me the energy to bring in more of these videos so if you are benefiting don't forget to leave a comment if you want something or another topic to be covered please leave us a comment on below and also just another question or not a, actually a question but just another suggestion is whenever i'm teaching these topics i'm focusing on a guy who says i am an underdog in this subject i'm struggling i'm not fast in learning i take a bit of time to understand that's why i call you the underdog because most of the time these uh, students usually find it difficult to follow in class and they end up not being able to understand what the teacher is doing because the lessons in the class are fast paced i was one person who also struggled in the normal teaching time because the teachers were always moving fast but i discovered that when i'm alone moving at a slower pace i'm able to understand these hence you see sometimes i take a little bit of more time because of such students and this channel unfortunately for you who's brilliant who's intelligent who's fast it is actually might not be meant for you i'm looking at someone who says i need it to be slow so that when i understand it i want to understand it once and for all so this is you that i'm looking for so if you're that student who says i know it's possible for me to pass this with a distinction i can get good marks provided i'm able to learn at my own pace so i am your tutor in this case so if you're that student just ensure that you always subscribe to our channel so that you can be able to follow that you are the underdog in this case now let's look at this question mechanical drives and lifting machines now i brought in some questions this is a revision session now most of the students have been asking to say this question topic is actually confusing is there a way that you can actually uh, take us through um even in teaching this whole topic so what i'm going to do here i'm just doing previous papers just for revision purposes, but I'm going to also have a section where I'm actually doing the teaching of this section because of the marks it carries. So let's look quickly at this part uh, of the questions that are shown here. So this is question number five that you usually find in your mechanical drives and lifting machines. And as you can see here, it's question number five. And then we start with question 5.1 and it's a bit of some theory here. Question 5.1 says, name two types of mechanical drive transfers. You know, it's a bit of a vague question or not clear question to say, what are the two types of mechanical drive transfers? That's the part there. Sometimes that it confuses because you're asking in terms of transfers in terms of power or transfers in terms of uh, rotational motion. But in this case, what they usually want whenever they're asking this question, sometimes they frame it and say, um, name three methods of transmitting power or name, I mean, two methods of transmitting power with the reference to mechanical drives. So it's a bit of a vague question. So two methods, here they use the word two types. So in this case, when they are saying name these two types, 
of transferring I mean types of mechanical trans transfers remember it's in a way asking you the types of drives that's what uh, you must actually say in your mind what are the types of drives that you know the first one is the what is the belt drives that's what they are saying so you have the belt drives remember in your module you're learning about the drives then you have the gear drives and then the third one is the chain drive so in 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 actual fact they are asking about the three types of drives in this case so don't forget the belt drives which is the v belt uh you can say uh, the v belts your gear drives as well as the chain drives so that is what they are asking for that question so that's 5.1 you can actually use uh, your test book for that but just ensure that you get those two marks now question 5.2 it says state two methods of reducing belt slip so you need to understand slip is when the belt comes out of the pulleys so the belt slip can be reduced by number one you can increase the arc contact um, again just contact uh, check your book uh, on these ones you can increase the arc contact number two you can um, adjust the tension adjust the tension in the belt so the, the keyword there is the tension in the belt so adjusting the tension another part maybe you can put but these are the two main ones you can say um uh, increasing the coefficient of friction increasing the coefficient remember that sign for coefficient that mu of friction i'm just writing it in brief but the key ones that i wanted you to have always in as much as this one but the one that are common is increasing the arc of conduct as well as increasing uh, adjusting the tension in the belt so you can do that to reduce belt slip now 5.3 again this is theory see these are very important think of it already it's two marks now the third mark says name two advantages of in this case they are talking about what gear drives so it says name two advantages so be careful there you're talking about the good part of it the of these of the gear drives over mean, meaning compared to belt drives in other ways what is a problem with belt drives that is a good with gear drives so the advantage of a gear drives number one is that there is no slip it's taken actually from this question remember they say two methods of reducing belt slips these you find in belt drives you see actually they mentioned the word belt so you find it in belt drives so now when you're starting to deal with um gear drives you'll discover that number one there is no slip in gear drives and then number two the other advantage is that uh, you can change direction gear drives can change direction and then the other advantage that you can use is they can be used in compact areas compact by compact we mean you can use them in small confined areas confined areas think of a watch you can you can these are used in small areas such as a watch or in an, in the engine of a car so you find that they use these gear drives or you can say confined areas or smaller spaces and then the other thing that can be an advantage is they require little maintenance In other ways, they are very efficient. Also, they require little maintenance. So these are the examples that you can bring uh, when it comes to advantages of gear drives compared to belt drives. So that is that. So just ensure that whenever you're dealing with these, such theory is already intact, guys. Things like um, these questions are very common. Now, let's look at question 5.4. Uh, question 5.4 says here, um the tension ratio of the tight side force of the slack side okay the tension ratio of the tight side force to the slack side force of a belt drive is 3 to 1 the force of the slack side is 300 newton the belt speed is 35 meters per second then it says calculate the following now let's try to sketch 
this because that is very important for you to have an idea. So what we have, we have a, um, a belt like that. It's always good to sketch. So the smaller one, say that is a slack. Okay, let me just use a different pen for that. So if we can have like that as a belt, to say there is a belt like going like that. And this particular belt is tight on this side. So now, if we can now come back to the question, they say the tension ratio of the tight side force. So there is the tight side. This, this one here at the bottom we call T tight side, which is our T1. They will give us a number. And then our T2, we call it the slack side. So this side is the tight, and this side is the slack. And then you need to know your pulleys. The smaller one is the driver, and the bigger one is the driven. You just have to have this information always handy. Then you have got this distance is your diameter of the smaller of the driver, which is D1. And then we have the diameter of the driven which we call it d2 and then also what we have in this case let's see the information given here they said the tension ratio of the tight side force to the slack side force of the belt is 3 to 1 the force of in the slack side is 300 newtons now look at this they are saying the force in the slack side so you need to look at the slack side and that force meaning the tension the word force there is our T and we call it T2. So T2 is 300. Are you seeing that? 300 newtons because it's on the slack side as well as the belt speed is 35 meters per second. So what you have here, you've got our V as our belt speed. V is equal to, is it 30 meters, uh, 35. So it's 35 meters per second so this is the information that we're given now with this information so what they're saying is we need to uh, do some calculations but they gave us information that I haven't used here they told us that the ratio of the tight side force to the slack side force of the belt is 3 to 1 we're going to use that information now now let's look at the question first it says calculate the following 5.4.1 the tight side force in the belt in other ways the tight side is our t1 they want us to calculate t1 which is 2 max now what you need to do let's go to the formulas just in brief so that i can show you most of the things uh the formulas that you expect whenever you're dealing with this section so this is a formula sheet and you will come in here you might be asked about the efficiency of the belt I mean the efficiency of the motor and then the most important formulas is the uh, effective force which is t1 which is the t1 is the tight side the tension in the tight side minus t2 the tension in the slack side as well as the tension ratio which is t2 over t1 where t1 is the tight side over the uh, slack side as well as that formula p power is effective force times velocity as well as v is pi dn also you will use that formula n is equal to big n over 60 where n in this case will be in units of rotations per second and the big n will be in rotations per minute so these are the formulas that are common so whenever you are given that so you are limited to those formulas you need then to know some formulas um, that you are going to be using here. So the first formula that they gave was this formula tension ratio, which is T1 over T2. So now if they call that the tension ratio, if I come and say tension ratio is equal to T1 over T2. Now what is a ratio? You can write a ratio in this sense to say T1 is to T2. That's how you write a ratio. Now they gave us in that format to say the tension ratio of the tight side, which is T1, to the slack side, which is T2. So here, when they say tight side, you have got T1. When they say 2, 
they have got that sign to the select side it's t2 then they gave 3 is to 1 so in here that's what i'm going to use i'm going to use 3 is to 1 you see how the whole thing is happening so now the question then was calculate calculate the following the tight side force in the belt so they want t1 so for you to do that you do what we call cross multiplying you multiply like that that uh, multiplies uh, is 3 multiplies t2 and t1 multiplies uh, 1 so when you write it you're going to say 1 times t1 is equal to 3 times t2 and then you come back to say but I know my t2 they told me my t2 is what is 300 so you have got 1 times t1 which is simple t1 is equal to 3 times t2 which is 300 so 3 times 300 which is equal to 900 but remember you're calculating t which is tension and the units are very important in this case which is 900 newtons that's why they say it here the tight side force they say it force because of that 5.4.2 the next question says the power transmitted by the belt so now for us to be able to find the power now we need to go to the formulas and say which formula is enabling me to find the power so if you come back to these formulas you see there is the formula that deals with power power is f e times v so if i use that formula to say power which is p is equal to f effective force times velocity now what is effective force we have another formula here that deals with effective force which is f e there is that formula it says t1 minus t2 is f e so you write these formulas f e is t1 minus t2 so with these two formulas we are able now to calculate what they are asking you to say calculate the what the power calculate the power transmitted by the belt so what you do you are saying now p if you, if you combine this equation one and this equation two you have got p is equal to where there is f e you are going to write this part which is t1 minus t2 and then you have a times but always protect that with a bracket times v which is the velocity in this case so that's how you're going to be calculating that you need then the information to use here to say p is t1 we have our t1 which was 900 minus t2 remember it was 300 multiplied by the velocity and they did mention that v was 35 meters per second remember they said um, in this case that it is the belt speed which is the velocity in this case times 35 so when you have done this so now when i calculate p it will be 900 minus 300 times 35 and you can see that i'm getting 21,000. so the answer here is equal to 21,000. remember power is measured in watts or if you want to put it in kilowatts you divide by a thousand it will be 21 kilowatts if you divide by a thousand i think but you can test it if i divide this by a thousand yeah i think it's 21 kilowatts but you can just check it with the answer i mean with the calculator so that is how you answer the first part of this question 5.4 now let me clear my page and go to the next one which is question 5.5 it says a chain drive has a driving pulley okay a chain drive has a driving pulley with 20, 20 teeth and a driven pulley with 60 teeth the rotational frequency of the driving pulley is 20 rotations per second now we need to calculate that so what do i do in that case again is a drive so what i do i draw the same diagram to say i have got the smaller pulley and i have the bigger pulley now the only difference now with the chain drive there is no slack side the sides are in a way equally tight so you have that and you have that but now since remember you're dealing with a uh, what you call this you are dealing with a chain so remember there is this sprocket wheel the teeth so i'm trying to show you that these are different now these are the teeth but similarly 
you have information such as the diameter, which is D1, and then you've got the diameter here, which is my D2. Don't forget, this is my driver, the smaller one, and the bigger one is my driven. And then also, what we are given, the teeth, they're saying, okay, there is, this is my T1, this is my T2. T means teeth in this case, my teeth on T1, which is the driver, they are saying a chain drive has a driving pulley with 20 teeth. So the driver there is 20 teeth. The driven, they didn't give us the teeth there. And then also the diameter we are not given, but they told us something says the rotational frequency of the driving pulley. There is another information there to say the rotational frequency, which is our N1, because it's linked with T1 of the driving pulley is 20 rotation per second. So in here, I have got also N. In here, I've got N1, which is equal to 20 R per second. Now, what about N2? I'm also not given what is N2. Now, let's look at the question now. It says 5.5.1. Calculate the speed of the driven pulley. Now, how do you go about this? Let's go to the formulas, guys. Remember, this is all the formulas you'll be given in that pass to say uh, you have to find your way. And if you look at the mark allocation in this particular case, uh, they gave it three marks. Why did they give it three marks? Because they wanted to manipulate these formulas. And the formula that you're going to manipulate in this case is that formula. V is pi dn. So if I use that formula in quick, remember V is equal to pi dn. I just want to show you if... Let's say, for instance, you're no longer remembering any formula regarding this. How do you go about it? So V is pi dn. If I say V1, it's pi d1 n1, which means also V2 is equal to pi d2 and n2. Now, what you need to remember is the velocity of the chain. In this case, the velocity in the smaller, when the velocity is V1, and the velocity here is v2 this velocity is the same for both um, sprocket wheels so they move at the same velocity meaning v1 is equal to v2 what does it mean it means pi d1 n1 is equal to pi d2 n2 you can see that we can divide by pi so we have d1 n1 is equal to d2 and two. Now, what I usually do is where there is a D, because I'm not given the D, but I'm given the T, for when you have, whenever you're dealing with the chain, they will give you the T, but when you're dealing with the belt drives, they will give you the D. Now, you substitute that for my T. So that's where I will have my T1 and 1 is equal to, same thing here, I will have my T2 and 2. So that's how I come with this formula here without uh, having struggles to say T1, N1 is equal to T2, N2. Now, the question here that they are asking is, I need to calculate the speed of the driven pulley. So I need N2 in this case, that's the speed. So what do I have? T1, you can see is 20 teeth times N1. They say 20 rotation per second is equal to T2. And let me see if ever they gave us T2 in that case. Now, if you look, um, actually, they gave us yes, T2, which is 60. I don't know why I didn't write T2 there. They did give us T2, which was 60 teeth. So in this case, it will be 60 times N2, which is what I'm going to be calculating. So if I do that, what I have here, you can see that I've got 20 times 20 is equal to 60 times N2. Now, how do I remain with N2? To remain with N2, you have to divide by what you don't want, which is that 60. But what you do on the left, you also do on the right. So you can then calculate the value of N2. So when you calculate that, I'll be having 20 times 20 over 60. And then it will give me 6,67 in two decimal places. So 6,67, remember, is rotation per second is equal to N2. Please, we're using the smaller N2 because it's measured in rotation per second.
Now let us look at the next question, which is question 5.5.2. Says calculate the speed ratio of the gears. Now, when we're talking about the speed ratio, in this case, if I say here speed ratio, now when you're talking about speed ratio, speed ratio is n1 over n2. That is the ratio is n1 over n2, which means the rotation of the driver pulley over the rotation of the driven pulley. So now if you look at N1, we did say it was 20. Over N2, we said it was 6, 6, 7. And then if you uh, work on that to find um, the answer there. So this will be 20 over 6, 6, 7 which is equal to, in this case, 2,9985. You can see if we, because we rounded off this, if we say it's 667 and say equal to 2,999, which means it's actually 3. So the answer there is 3. But now when you write it as the speed ratio, remember they, they say it ratio, you need to leave your answer as 3 is to 1. You need to leave your answer like that. So the speed ratio is 3 is to 1. So don't just leave your answer as 3. You'll be penalized the mark. So that's how you answer that. And then last but not least, they just wanted a small definition there. The unit, uh, define the unit Pascal. Now Pascal is when a load of 1 Newton is applied over an area, an area of 1 meter squared. So 1 Newton per 1 meter squared. That is uh, the Pascal. But the key I wanted to focus on here, as you can see, was the calculations that were involved. But um, if you look at the definition or the topic here, it's mechanical drives and lifting machines. So it was mainly focusing on the mechanical drives. And then the next part of the lesson, we still continue looking at both the mechanical drives and the lifting machines and the calculations that are involved. So this is part one of the lesson. As I said, guys, remember to subscribe so that when I bring in part two, part three, and possible part four, by then you will be in a position to answer this question in your final exam. I hope this will be of benefit to you as you prepare for a final exam. Don't forget, leave us some comments and we'll be able to reach out to you and answer some of those questions. We've come to the end of our lesson. Thank you.